organisations all over Scotland that were aware of the old sound collection. So there's museums, libraries, archives. We're all kind of working together to try and improve the care and access to our sound collection. Over the last number of years, we're aware of the kind of need for doing something with our sound collections. They're often neglected. They're lying within our collection stores, and we know that we're not able to provide the care and access to them that we want. We've been aiming to, to work together more and try and make people feel more equipped to see the full potential of these collections, get them out to the public, get them listened to again. So the Connecting Scotland Sounds project has involved two separate things. We've had knowledge exchange and different events to help raise capacity amongst people who are learning to care for Scotland Sounds and also public engagement. So there's been a number of different projects which help connect audiences with Scotland's heritage sound recordings. Scotland's past. We can see it, we can touch it, and we can hear it. The Knowledge Exchange Programme for Connecting Scotland Sounds has involved a range of different training events and coaching opportunities. Over the last two years we've organised 19 different events for people across Scotland to learn a little bit more about caring for archive sounds. In March 2017, we worked with the School of Scotch Studies Archives at the University of Edinburgh to create a hands-on digitisation day, which helped participants go from having a recording on an analogue format, reel-to-reel, -reel, right through to a digital copy. We turned back time at our Caring for Analogue Collections course. Attenders got a sense of nostalgia as they were set the challenge to take apart a cassette and put it back together again. We had an event called All Ears in Dundee, which allowed people to come together and learn more about how to engage audiences with archive sounds. There were presenters who covered topics such as exhibition design using sound, schools workshops involving archive audio and practical audio editing skills. I really enjoyed hearing uh, the diversity of projects and the different ways in which people are using sounds to engage with people and to, to help people learn about the past and about culture and about music. It's been great to see people from such a wide range of backgrounds come to our training events. We've had over 300 people from museums backgrounds, libraries, archives, community trusts, private collections, all looking to share knowledge and learn a little bit more about caring for Scotland Sounds. I'm really, really impressed with what we've managed to achieve with the project to date. There's been so much activity happening all over Scotland, lots of different projects, lots of different organisations working with the local communities that are around them. There's lots of potential for that to carry on beyond the length of this project. We've had a host of different public engagement events, approximately 80 in schools, community centres, museums and libraries. We partnered with Media Education to create community podcasts in four different parts of Scotland, in Helmsdale, in Glasgow, in Fife and in Orkney. Different communities across Scotland were given the chance to make a podcast and have their say on the archive recordings in their area. How do you think the day has gone? I think the day has been a really good day. It's been very interesting to see the different technologies and get you out to classes and see how you work with the different sounds and the team with us here. Community interest company Local Voices ran a workshop series called Finding Our Voices, Exploring Local Songs. They ran workshops in eight different schools along the east coast of Scotland, exploring Scots song. My father was a very fair wee farmer kid He worked on the land all the days of his life. By the time he was second, the answer he reckoned, he'd grew near on half a week's nick of Foam Namara, or Sound of the Sea, was a lovely project designed to use the incredible sound archives contained within Canna House on the tiny island of Canna. Together with the wonderful black and white photography and film collection, we combined the images together with new musical work and new artistic work and the original sound archive and created a sound installation within the pier waiting room on the island of Canna, a wonderful resource for residents and visitors alike. 
we also collaborated with Edinburgh Napier University to showcase unique Edinburgh jazz archive recordings alongside live music. In February 2017, as part of LGBT History Month, we worked with LGBT Health and Wellbeing and Our Story Scotland to share the stories of LGBT people who had relocated within Scotland or come into Scotland. Sounding Borders was a large project as part of the Connecting Scotland Sounds initiative. From animation to printmaking and from creative writing workshops to drama, there were lots of opportunities for people to creatively respond to the rich collections in the Scottish Borders archives. So I had to take my duty board and jump up onto the front and sit there and take the snow off the windscreen or the road for Harriet to Gawley. I've seen an awful lot of changes in the years that I've lived. I, went, uh, I can remember when I went to the school the past day. I think it's inspired a lot of people, both the public and, and within collection holders, and we're able to kind of really spur on from that and look at other projects and look at other things we want to do now, now that we've kind of built up that profile. We're hugely grateful to the Esme Fairbairn Foundation for our funding and importantly to all the partners who worked with us on this project. From speaking at knowledge exchange events through to partnering us for public engagement activities, we think we've worked with over 150 people and we're really grateful for all your support. If you like the sound of Scotland's past, pass it on. Oh, no.